You are watching Shoutcraft, exciting entry-level esports commentary with myself, Total Biscuits. The horrendous, and I do mean absolutely horrendous, jargon that I've been picking up over the past few weeks. It's bad. Shoutcraft's supposed to be no jargon. That's the point. It's supposed to be no jargon. And if there is jargon, then it defeats the entire point of Shoutcraft. So I'm not going to be saying, so. oh, it's a 1-1-1 build, oh, it's a 4-gate, blah de blah because if you've never seen this before, you have no idea what those things are. So it's like, oh, he's building four gateways. That makes sense, because there are gateways, there are four of them, and he is building them. He is building a barracks, he is building a factory, and he is building a starport. So there you go, 1-1-1 one, one, one might be shorter, but I speak faster than most casters, so I think I can get away with it. Alright, let's have a look and see what's going on right here. Mausmana with his first pylon. It's a very exciting moment for any Protoss I tend to find. And going straight in with the gateway on 12 supply. A little bit early, you can go in on 12 supply and go in on 13 supply. Let's you push a little bit quicker if you happen to put it up on 12. So it's, it's good either way, let's be honest. 13 is slightly, very, very slightly better for the economy, but not a big deal. Barracks coming up right here for QXC. Not that the Terran really have many openers anymore, unfortunately. You might remember back in the beta, they were able to open with a barracks straight away instead of a supply depot and build Reapers for rushing purposes. Or indeed, Marines for rushing purposes and bunkers for rushing purposes. Whatever your heart desires. You can't do that anymore. You've got to build a supply depot first and then a barracks. So that kind of limits the openers that you can put into play if you happen to be a Terran. QXC scouts his opponent, and Mana also scouts his opponent. He's going to do a little bit of a dance right here and see what he can pull off. Well, he's lost his shields already, which is a bad situation for any Protoss, but he will soon rebuild that. And look at this, QXC building a barracks right down at the bottom, and that has not been scouted. That is a sneaky maneuver there by QXC. So his opponent... As far as he is aware, has scouted that there is... Oh, but is he going to see that? That is a good question. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you might do this. The first is to hide your extra production facilities from your opponent. The second is to prevent a proxy pylon being built there. Admittedly, that's not an I necessarily an ideal position for a proxy pylon. I can think of a few others, but hey, there you go. So, my next core coming up for Mana. It's a pretty standard opening. He's going to build the warp gate technology after this, and once he's done that, he uh, can go out to maybe three gateways and go into Colossi, or he can go for four gateways and go for a gateway-heavy setup, which involves usually a mix of zealots, stalkers, and sentries. Totally fine. Reaper coming out, and they see he's building a this proxy barracks out here. And then he's building this one right here. He's going to open with a Reaper. He's going into a Marauder as well, so he's got a little bit of flexibility. I have to wonder if he's going to keep pushing that out, or if he's simply building this other tech lab for the sole purpose of more research. Looks like he's going for a Marauder heavy build early on, which is good against the Protoss. In the meantime, his opponent Mana is going straight into a robotics facility on a single gateway. That's going to serve him well if his opponent is going with this Marauder push strategy, because of course the Immortals will tear Marauders apart. It is a messy, messy thing to watch, folks. Mana still hasn't scouted that, but he did see that Marauder moving in a very unusual manner. There you go. See you want to get there? Very unusual manner? Uh, no, no, it's terrible, I know. There you go, and Mana scouted that one, so no big surprises coming out there for him. But it's a loss, unfortunately and he loses that, but there's a loss as well. That Reaper has been torn apart, but it did take a century with it, so it was pretty good for him. Mana having lost now three units, slightly behind in terms of that. It, the loss of the sentry early was a little bit unpleasant. Bear in mind that the sentry does cost quite a lot of gas. So losing that amount of gas so early in the game, not such a great thing. A small push of Marauders and a single Marine moving out right here. QXC hanging around with his SCV that's going to get turned into fine paste if he's not careful. Little push up the ramp here for some early damage. It's going to be blocked off by Mana looking for the sentry. There you go. And there's the force field. So four Marauders and a single Marine camping out, making a little fire outside of Mana's base at this point in time, and looking to make their way in when they get the opportunity, which is going to be as soon as that shield goes down. However, Mana is able to pump out an Immortal. It's Immortal coming straight out. That'll be a nice counter to those Marauders. Will one be enough? Probably. Absolutely, I would say, especially with the backup of two Stalkers right there. QXC pushing in once again. Doesn't have Stimpak right now, but he does have Concussive Missile. Using those Concussive Shells to take that one down. He's going to grab that Marauder right there. Go on. There you go. Takes the Marauder. 
Five Marauders now retreating very rapidly and being pushed back. Staring at that nasty, unpleasant immortal. Takes an SCV with him for good measure, simply out of spite. And Mana looking in a good position against this particular strategy. The question is, ladies and gentlemen, what is he going to do to counter that? QXE looking for an expansion right here. He's going to expand with this command center, probably into this area right here, I would imagine. Bunkers coming up for very rapid defense, looking to do something against a possible counterattack. And more barracks coming up for QXC. QXC looking for, I would imagine, more Marines now. Marines Marauders are still going to work pretty well against this build. Only a single Immortal out right now. Two Gateway right here. And are we looking for... Yes, we are. We're looking for a Colossus coming out pretty soon. Colossi will be a solid counter to the Marines Marauders strategy. And he's going to have to vary things up just a little bit if he wants to deal with that. Marine Shield, Stimpak coming up as well. Investing heavily into these early barracks units. That's all he's doing right now. Look at how many barracks he's building. He's got three on the way as well. He's already got two, so that's going to be great for him. Put me out an awful lot of units looking to overwhelm his opponent with sheer weight of numbers. The question is, can he defend against this? Because look what he has. He's got four zealots. He's got one immortal. He's got two stalkers. He's got... Actually, no, he hasn't. He's got two sentries. He's got three stalkers. Yes. He was tricking me with an illusion. Yes, that's what they do. The Protoss are known for tricking people. He's a lord's a Protoss, a mind tricker. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your faction. I want to go home and kill the bunker. There you go. We can do that as well. That shield's not going to do too much against the fire from the marauders, unfortunately, for him. That could be problematic. There we go. Smashing that bunker to pieces is not enough, though. Not enough at all. And he is inflicting some losses there. Going to lose the zealot at the rear. He's not happy about that at all. Mao's mana set home with his tail between his legs and looking a little bit silly for it. It was very solid defense there by QXC, pulling his SCVs quickly off the mineral line to fix up that bunker. That's a lot of firepower he's able to bring to bear. The sentry shield does reduce damage a little bit. You see, it reduces the damage down by two. But bear in mind just how much damage these things do. They can inflict a huge amount of damage. 10 and 20 versus armored. So it's not great, honestly, especially when defending against stalkers. But it does help. There's no doubt about that. If you're going to use your sentries in a mix like that, then absolutely put your shield up. Just don't expect it to be the miracle that you need. There's the extended Thermal Lance upgrade coming up right here, and the first Colossi is on the field. The question is, will it be enough? Right now, I'm not entirely convinced by that, honestly. If we have a look at it, we're looking at the forces he's up against. 11 Marauders, 10 Marines, more being pumped out. Is he going into any other tech whatsoever? No, yeah, he's got an engineering bay, but he hasn't even grabbed plus one or plus one in either armor or weapons upgrades right now. We're looking simply to overwhelm his opponent. Big force rolling out right there, and Mana pulling his forces back to defend his expansion. Will it work? Most likely, yes it will. Slices up an SCV scout right there. Sacrifice to give a little bit of vision. And in we go. Will that single Colossi make the difference? It certainly will. You see it's carving through it right there. But look at that amount of firepower brought to bear on Mana's forces. Now rushing straight past there. Outrunning the Colossi. Takes a few stragglers with it. But it's not good enough. Stimmed straight into the mineral line. Huge economic damage coming in right here. One pro, two pro, three pro, four. Five probe, six probe, seven probe, more. But there goes all of the Terran forces sliced apart by the Colossi and the side blades of the Zealot. How much economic damage was done there? That's the question. Mana is lagging behind quite a bit. And a second wave moving in, but it's not particularly large. And that's going to be annihilated by Mana's forces if he's going to stick around for it. And I don't think he's going to do that. He's going to hide behind that statue with the nice dog. Is that a dog? Yes, it looks like a very nice dog there. Could be a husky, ladies and gentlemen. Who knows? Who knows? Looks a little bit aggressive for a husky, honestly. You know, husky's not all that aggressive, really. Two Colossi now. Moving out with an escort of Zealots. We've got, ooh, quite a few actually. Eight Zealots. Oh, that Marine is regretting even going to work today. And pushing his way forward once again, looking to do a lot of damage there. And that missile turret built to counter the Colossi is not going to do too much. Look at that. Nice sentry block right there. And he's able to neutralize a lot of the firepower. He wants to bring that bunker down. Needs to bring that bunker down. Losing so many Zealots in the process. It finally, come on, bring the bunker down. There it goes. Bunker is down and he's now cutting a bloody swathe through the Terran forces. Oh yes, they're not going to be able to counter this. Honestly, he's going to have to bump out an awful lot more to deal with two Colossi. He's looking for lots of firepower from the bunker, but extended thermal lance upgrade means it's not going to happen. But it is staying up. Just look at how many SCVs he's got to be There we go. Stimmed. Marauders in from the side and a nice split once again with the Sentry. Mana's Sentry is going to get the Player of the Week award. No doubt about that one. And he's able to slice them up with the powerful laser beams there from the Colossi. Looking down. 50%, 40%, 30, 20, 10. And it's gone, ladies and gentlemen. A third Colossi moving in to reinforce. Down goes one, two, three, and four of those Marauders. And that expansion is ripe for the picking. QXC GG's. Yes, indeed. Good game. And the first game goes to Mana. 
Nicely played there by both of our contestants. But yes, that aggression going into that two gateway into the Colossus build did a very, very good job indeed. It was a stalwart defense. Even with the aggression of QXC managing to slip past the initial forces right here at the expansion and doing significant economic damage, the counterattack came in and it was extremely affected. Extended Thermal Lance upgrade once again, proving itself to be absolutely invaluable. Okay, folks, are you ready for game number two? I certainly am.